let's pray father thank you so much for pastor Kola and his dear wife thank you for the new covenant assembly thank you for that which they are doing for the kingdom in canada lord you have directed a fast a time to seek your face a time to be transformed and lord i pray that together as we share from your word let the bread of the spirit be broken grant us understanding grant us illumination in the name of jesus christ we declare that whilst your word comes let your power be available to heal to deliver to transform and that in the end of it our lives will be changed and jesus will again be revealed and glorified in our lives we thank you in jesus name amen and amen thank you so much again i'd like you to turn your bibles to habakkuk chapter 3 let's start with this scripture habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 2 i'll be teaching very briefly and then we'll pray on what i title the keys to personal revival the keys to personal revival i believe that this is a time when the whole church as a family of faith in calgary there is seeking the face of the lord trusting him for direction trusting him to step into higher levels in the faith and um, this i believe by the spirit is a timely message to help guide you through the process of prayer and fast let me read habakkuk 3 and verse 2 it says oh lord i have heard thy speech and i was afraid he says oh lord revive thy walk in the midst of the years in the midst of the years make known in wrath remember mercy revival is a concept that um i think has been seldom understood by our generation the reason is because not much of it has been seen in our lifetime but the bible and then history has a lot to tell us about revivals men and women who walked upon the face of the earth and were used mightily by god to wrought righteousness and to promote the cause of the kingdom we also have records of nations that came under the influence of an awakening a moment of power a moment of god consciousness so write this very quickly what is a revival a revival represents an awakening a revival represents a moment in time either in the life of an individual or over a territory where there is a heightened level of god consciousness there is a heightened level of christ consciousness there is a heightened level of righteousness there is a heightened level of the move of the spirit all of these factors represent revival a heightened level of god consciousness christ consciousness a heightened level of signs and wonders and outpouring of the spirit now a revival can happen across a territory such as the world's revival for those of us who are students of bible history and then modern history we have the azusa street revival and those of you in canada that's not far from you it was in the u.s so it's 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 history that you know the moment in time when the power of god moved so mightily across territories then we have personal revival so we have territorial revivals where the power of god comes across a territory and then we have personal revivals my concern for this session is a personal revival a moment where your life comes under an unusual influence of the power the grace of god with a determination to know the lord and to serve him acceptably it says revive thy works even in the midst of the years there are keys very quickly that control revival it looks as though in every generation there seems to be a group of people who god would find and anoint in an unusual way to do mighty and great things even for the kingdom and for a very long time 
people have studied on revivals what what is the secret that controls the unusual dimension of god's power and god's grace upon the life of a person a church a territory and so on and so forth and i hope that as we journey through scripture we would find keys that will ignite us and set us on fire i have three keys down here and then we'll pray number one the first key that is responsible for personal revival and awakening in the life of an individual in the life of a church is the price or the key of intimacy the price of intimacy with the holy spirit passion and surrender i have learned from scripture from my own life and from the privilege of uncommon mentorship that intimacy controls power intimacy in the spirit controls relevance many believers want to experience the power of god the glory of god but are largely unwilling to commit themselves to spend time to know the lord to spend time to build intimacy intimacy would require time an investment of time jeremiah chapter 17 we we'll read from verse 9 and 10 jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 9 and 10 the heart condition of a man is a very big deal to god in doing business with god the primary port of call is the state of a man's heart more than the religious activities that happen the state of a man's heart can veto his activity in church can veto his preaching if he's a man of god can veto all of the kingdom activities if the heart the state of a man's heart is corrupt and not upright before god then his work cannot be acceptable and his work cannot be approved here's what jeremiah 17 from verse 9 and 10 says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked it says who can know it verse 10 i the lord search the heart i try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing that means whilst i preach whilst i lift my hands in worship whilst i engage in all of the religious activities the lord would have to vet the state of a man's heart the purity the sincerity the motif and the motivation i have learned that the motif what sponsors every spiritual activity is a big deal to god the bible talks about the a very interesting synoptic rendition of the woman with the alabaster box the bible says this woman brought in an alabaster box that was of pure nerd a year's wages then the bible says she broke it at the feet of the master and used her hair and the moment judah saw that the bible says judah queried the waste and he said why was this wasted it would have been saved and given to the poor and then the bible was very quick to let us know that not that he cared for the poor but that he was a thief so what he said looked like a show of compassion but it was motivated by a corrupt heart a desire to have access to the treasury so he would keep stealing it's amazing how many well-meaning activities happen around the body of christ but are largely motivated by all kinds of prejudices all kinds of flesh and this is why we are immersed in so many religious activities that do not produce the kind of power and spiritual potency that should come from them the price of intimacy we must love the lord more than activities we must love the lord more than church we must love the lord more than ministry we must love the lord more than the desire to be famous the desire to be great 
this is the first key to be mightily used by god john 14 and verse 21 john 14 and verse 21 very interesting rendition i was in shock the first day i found this scripture many years ago and it's not left my heart and it will remain with me forever he that keepeth my commandments the bible says he hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and i will love him and will manifest myself to him verse 23 same scripture john 14 and verse 23 jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him so there is a key and there is a secret that controls the manifestation of God's power and grace intimacy 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 with God intimacy that produces hunger genuine hunger intimacy that produces passion passion that is beyond religion intimacy that produces such depth of love listen to me new covenant assembly if you want god to do great things with you personally and as a church in this season and in this time i want you to love the lord and to hunger to seek after him beyond prosperity beyond increase beyond breakthrough there must be a desperation from your heart there must be a drive to spend time in worship to spend time in prayer to spend time making god the highest priority in your life the price of intimacy I made up my mind as a man of God and as a person that nothing and no one and no activity will ever be able to take the place of God in my life I love him sincerely I love him beyond church I love him beyond ministry I will fold ministry a thousand times to preserve my relationship with him and this is the secret one of the secrets I would say that by the privilege of God's mercy has been responsible for his hand upon my life and what he continues to do in and through us the price of intimacy for many of you the Lord is calling you by this teaching return to the place of intimacy we started with hunger and passion but activities stole away his presence activities stole away time we can be busy for God busy doing great things for God and yet not be with god the bible says and enoch the seventh man from creation and enoch walked with god and he was not my greatest desire and my greatest testimony at the end of my life is christ tarries um should not be that we build churches or we did had crusades or we had all kinds of things as wonderful as these reports and these testimonies may look my greatest desire is that it will be said at the end of my life that this man loved the Lord with all his heart and passionately sought the Lord and helped a generation to do same is the noblest testimony that I covet intimacy intimacy you must be passionate about God and you must surrender everything everything is the key you may have heard me say it in my teachings that the price for all of God is all of you not your offering not your singing not your teaching not your church commitment alone these things are wonderful but the price for all of God is all of you your relevance your ego your money your life that is the price to see all of God so God loves everybody but he cannot use everybody the reason is because not many are willing to pay the price to be intimate with God the price to be intimate with the Holy Spirit I have made up my mind that as far as I'm alive it will become a a journey a pursuit that will never have an end to seek his face and to love him and I continue to enjoy all kinds of supernatural blessings that come from intimacy so price number one 
for personal revival is the price for intimacy prioritizing god prioritizing spiritual things prioritizing the things of the kingdom developing a hunger you know in our world today hunger is proof of health when people are sick the first thing they lose is appetite so the moment you no longer hunger after the things of god the word of god prayer fellowship and more importantly the desire to live by the principles of the kingdom that already is a symptom that your spirit man is sick because hunger is proof of health and the bible says blessed are they that hunger and thirst for they shall be filled so i pray and believe and join my faith with you that whilst you are listening to me that a hunger for god will well up within you again a hunger to return back to the place of prayer a hunger to fast acceptably a hunger to love jesus that in the busyness of the activities of our time and our day running up and down children family life career ministry business travels now covid you know several things that try to eat up our time and space we return back to the lord and say you still are my priority you still are my everything every other thing can go away but you still remain my priority in genesis chapter 28 um you may just write that for reference genesis chapter 28 the bible talks about a strange man called jacob that one time he came there and that jacob laid down to sleep he came to a place called Luz, and then he had a dream he saw a ladder ascending and descending the angels were on top moving around but the bible does not say they were coming to him they were moving around and going to those who were doing business with god and even though he was having these angelic encounters it did not profit him and he woke up and said surely the lord is in this place and i knew not he said this is the gate of heaven the house of god he missed out on that encounter because his heart was busy with so many things the next episode of his life will be in the house of laban battered frustrated humiliated defrauded for so many years and by the time we get to genesis 32 jacob now has learned his lesson the bible says he dismissed his wives he dismissed his cattle he dismissed everyone and everything and when he was alone a man came to him and the bible says a wrestle began that night and he, the man said leave me for the day breaketh and jacob said i will not let you go unless you bless me and he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called jacob for as a prince you have had power with god and you have prevailed he touched the whole of his tie and jacob became incapacitated his source of strength and stability outside of god was destabilized so that he would never find balance and completion outside of god's assistance and god called that a blessing that means inadequacy in the spirit is a blessing when you are complete outside of god there is trouble when god comes to you his first port of call is to seek that which makes you adequate without him that's how god blesses us in this kingdom inadequate without him amen now jacob received a blessing the moment he became inadequate and he was called israel for as a prince you have had power with god and you have prevailed and the bible says he was blessed and the sun arose and they called the place peniel for i have seen god face to face and my life is preserved praise the name of the lord so intimacy with the holy spirit intimacy with god is the first price and the first key to personal revival number two very quickly number two very very quickly the second key that controls revival in the life of an individual in the life of a church and in a territory is access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the mysteries of the kingdom
you're never going to be able to do much for the kingdom until you have sufficient level of spiritual illumination now many believers are well-meaning many believers are sincere but there is a gross level of spiritual darkness ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 the bible says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart a believer can be born again can be in christ but not a, he may not be able to manifest the fullness of that potential because of darkness this kingdom is a kingdom that operates by light this kingdom is a kingdom that is driven by knowledge driven by knowledge hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 he says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou shalt be no more priest to me seeing that thou has forgotten the law of thy god i will also forget thy children knowledge knowledge we need knowledge psalm 25 and verse 14 psalm 25 and verse 14 very very powerful rendition the bible says the secret of the lord is with them that fear him so god has secrets not everything in the kingdom is for is is seen and known at plain sight every responsible man has different chambers in his house you have the living room you have the bedroom and not everyone would add would have access to the bedroom visitors can come and stay outside they may come into the living room but you only beckon on those who you have trusted those who you have built relationship with to be allowed into the living the inner room the inner chambers so the secret of the lord the bible says is with them that fear him is the hebrew word yirat adonai the spirit of reverence reverence for god and he will show them his covenants we rise in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries and the secrets that we know psalm 82 from verse 5 very powerful classic renditions psalm 82 and verse 5 here's what it says they know not so it now begins to address the issue of ignorance they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high the tragedy is in the next verse verse 7 it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes So it's very very important for us to know and to understand that we need access to light access to light this light this body of spiritual knowledge they are called mysteries matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 please pay attention dear family of god pay attention he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given it is given unto you to know we rise in this kingdom and we excel on the strength of the mysteries this body of spiritual knowledge that we know there is a mystery that controls lifting there is a mystery that controls speed there is a mystery that controls restoration there is a mystery that controls longevity there is a mystery that controls influence there is a mystery that controls being anointed our assignment as believers is to be like spiritual archaeologists searching for these mysteries the bible says they are life to those who find them and even health to their flesh we have many sincere and well-meaning believers who become victims of life victims of the vicissitudes of life they are unable to rise to the zenith of their spiritual potentials the reason is because there is a bankruptcy of a thorough methodical understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom in revelation chapter 3 revelation chapter 3 from verse 7 
it says unto the angel of the church in philadelphia right these things saith he that is holy he that is true now listen carefully it says he that had the key of david whoever possesses that key has the ability to open and no man shut it and shut it and no man openeth so it takes a key in this case the key of david to be able to open doors and to shut doors there must be a passion and a hunger in us especially at this period of prayer and fasting to desire spiritual illumination high level spiritual illumination ephesians chapter 3 last scripture Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus, part of his apostolic ministry, Ephesians chapter 3. And he began to let them see the basis of his apostolic ministry. From verse 3, he says, How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote aforetime in few words. We're reading down to verse 10. Verse 4 says, Whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ in other words i'm not these things were not just information that i learned i was brought initiated into a body of knowledge verse 5 says which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit that the gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in christ by the gospel it says wherefore for this cause now i was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of god given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that i should preach among the gentiles the unsearchable riches of christ verse 9 and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery here it is now which from the beginning of the world had been hid in god who created all things by christ jesus to the intent verse 10 to the intent that now this is what we do with these mysteries this is why we need to lay hold of them to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold multifaceted wisdom of god so we need access to the mysteries of the kingdom if we must experience revival in our lives revival an awakening a move of god we need access to light the days of spiritual ignorance must come to an end in our lives and this will come when we pursue the truth we must buy the truth and sell it not the truth is expensive we will use the currency of meekness the currency of hunger the currency of sincerity the currency of passion to buy the truth the times that we live in will no longer give room for ignorance and shadow boxing spiritually. We must step into higher and more accurate levels. The Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. This will require us knowing the exact spiritual keys that control the outcomes that we desire arbitrarily hoping that things will be better arbitrarily hoping that things will change arbitrarily hoping that one day things will be better is just a sociological system of comfort but it is not true it will take light light isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 it says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified says arise isaiah 60 and verse 1 it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light it takes light spiritual illumination so let's do a quick recap the first key that controls personal revival and even territorial revival is the price of hunger passion consecration that ultimately culminates into intimacy with god then number two the price to access the mysteries of the kingdom 
knowledge light high level spiritual illumination the bible says that there were many lights when god was doing the creation in genesis chapter one there were many lights it says but there were two great lights and that this light would rule the day for one the sun and then the other the moon would rule in the night you must possess this light to rule the day and then to rule the night the next key and that will be the last for this session is that for you to be able to command superior levels of revival in your life and then across your territory and even in the church you need an encounter with unusual dimensions of the anointing an encounter with unusual dimensions of the anointing psalm 89 from verse 20 unusual dimensions of the anointing let me define the anointing what is the anointing the anointing is god's ability god's energy the capacity to produce god's dimension of results is called the anointing the anointing is a system of authorization is a system of ordination the anointing is a system of legitimization it legitimizes your operation the bible says i have found david my servant and with my holy oil i have anointed him next verse it says the with whom my hand shall be established my arm also shall strengthen him 22 the enemy by reason of the anointing shall not exert upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him uh-huh next verse and i will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him 24 but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted this is the anointing isaiah chapter 61 the messianic prophecy it was theologically speaking um, an expression of the coming of jesus christ isaiah 61 but then by extension this also applies to the saints isaiah 61 from verse 1 the bible says the spirit of the lord god is upon me because he had anointed ordained legitimized me to preach good tidings so it takes the anointing to preach good tidings it takes the anointing to bind up broken hearts not just a, a sense of empathy and sympathy it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives there are people who need more than counseling there are people who need more than therapies they need an encounter with unusual dimensions of the anointing it takes the anointing to open the prison to them that are bound people who physically may seem to be walking but in the realm of the spirit are under all kinds of yokes of bondage it takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god it takes the anointing to comfort all those who mourn to appoint unto them verse 3 says who mourn in zion it takes the anointing to give men beauty for ashes listen to me believers it takes the anointing to give men beauty for ashes and oil of joy for mourning the bible says the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness to the end that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified the anointing I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit my life is a product of the anointing that which God has done and continues to do through my life and the ministry is a product of the anointing what the Lord has done so far in the life of your pastor and even the church is a product of the anointing we need the anointing we need superior dimensions of the anointing yesterday's oil may not be able to solve today's challenges we need ever increasing levels of the anointing and there are two keys that control the manifestation of the anointing many really but two for this session there are two main keys that control the coming the arrival and the multiplication of the anointing upon the life of an individual number one the first key is prayer and fasting from the bible 
and from church history prayer and fasting have been the irrefutable keys that control personal revival there will not be any substitute no matter what for prayer and fasting not just prayer prayer with fasting in luke chapter 4 luke chapter 4 we we'll read from verse 14 luke chapter 4 from verse 14 this is jesus this is jesus now when you read the preceding verses the bible lets us know that heaven after he was filled uh, with the holy spirit having been baptized of john in jordan the bible says the spirit drove him to the wilderness and there he fasted 40 days and night was tempted of the devil overcame the devil through the word and then the synoptic rendition of luke says and jesus returned in the power of the spirit he went to the wilderness filled with the spirit but returned in the power of the spirit and the bible says there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about believers must pray and believers must fast believers must pray and believers must fast prayer and fasting are non-negotiable non-negotiable requirements for power for grace genuine authentic anointing answers to prayer and fasting there is no man of god world over who genuinely walks in significant levels of the power of the holy spirit commanding strange order of results who is a stranger to the ministry of prayer and fasting is one of the cardinal indices of priesthood the ability to pray the ability to fast luke chapter 18 and verse 1 the bible says jesus spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 the bible says pray without season it does not mean pray all day long it means be consistent pray without season James chapter 5 from verse 13 Apostle James was mentoring us and helping us understand the dynamics of prayer and here's what he said is any of you afflicted he didn't say let him go around discussing with people who may not be able to help the 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 scriptural solution recommendation for any kind of affliction is let him pray the Bible says you have not because you ask not you have not because you ask not prayer is powerful prayerlessness is pride the highest proof of pride is prayerlessness because it's a declaration that you do not need the assistance of heaven being prayerful is humility is a sign that you are ever conscious of your inadequacy outside of the assistance of heaven prayerlessness is a real attack whatever attacks your prayer life has attacked your destiny whatever has attacked your prayer life eventually every other aspect of your life will reflect the quality of your prayer life unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come the bible says my house jesus flogging and dismissing people out of the temple for merchandising his house here's what he had to say he says my house shall be called a house of prayer but you have turned it to a den of robbers there's a powerful revelation there if your body is the temple of the holy spirit if it is not a house of prayer then robbers will come to your body robbers will come to your body they will come as sicknesses they will come as infirmity they will come as negative conditions so if your house which is god's house is either a house of prayer or a den of robbers 
I believe in the ministry of prayer you do not know how cheap the devil is you do not know how powerful God is until you submit yourself to the ministry of priesthood the prayer that prevails now there are many dimensions to prayer but the primary assignment of prayer is not for petitions the primary assignment of prayer is for your transformation more than an instrument to petition God your transformation as Jesus prayed his raiment became white and glistering transformation through the ministry of prayer prayer and fasting is a practice that has been lost in many Christian circles and all that is left there is religion and a similitude of the dry bones in Ezekiel 37 the first miracle that happened for the bones to become an army was a restoration of structure a restoration of the bones bones coming back to his bones patterns coming back to their patterns and by this i really salute pastor call and the entire pastorate of the new covenant assembly for being sensitive enough to the holy spirit to set up this time of prayer this time of fasting now i submit to you that it takes a lot of sacrifice it takes a lot of constraint to fast for a prolonged period but then in the midst of it you command levels of power there is medicinal value in fasting medical people tell us that when you submit yourself to fasting after a period pending on the kind of fast i'm not going into that now but after three or four days a period of a, a process of cleansing begins detoxification begins in your body a breaking down of of an an exiting of dead cells and all kinds of things it is true so it, it prayer and fasting profits you all wise spiritually you are rotting victory you are growing in the spirit your hunger prayer and fasting is also one of the cures for walking in the flesh when you find out that your flesh seems to be gaining ascendance over your life the appetites of gluttony the appetites of lust the appetites of anger the traits of the carnal man seem to be eating you up submitting yourself to a process of fasting and prayer will cut away these encumbrances in your life like the eagle would rise to a high altitude the bible says and then will remain there defeather itself and stand there until a new and strengthened feather begins to come and then it will soar from that renewed dimension prayer and fasting are powerful keys no wonder the devil fights prayer satan would prefer a healthy church to a prayerful church satan would prefer a prosperous church to a prayerful church he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray now there are many people who fast but they just sleep from morning till night and they get up 10 minutes to round up the fast and just mumble some tongues that's not effective fasting there is a kind of fast there is a type of fast where you engage in the ministry of the word and you engage in prayer now i know that many of us have our jobs we have family issues to attend to we have all kinds of things but we must create time intentionally to meditate upon the word and to fast you can get um your 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 audios on mp3 or whatever device and even whilst you are walking on the go your spirit man is fired up you're driving there's a sermon playing this is a period of spiritual emphasis don't waste it don't just starve yourself of food and then just lose weight it shouldn't be the only thing that happens within this period it should be a process of intentionally engaging the word a time of soul searching repentance a time of pouring out your heart and your soul prayer and fasting the next key that controls 
the coming and the multiplication of the anointing is impartation remember what we're dealing with here the keys that control personal revival number one intimacy hunger number two access to the mysteries of the kingdom number three accessing unusual dimensions of the anointing and i said to access the anointing the first key is prayer and fasting the second key is impartation what is an impartation an impartation is a system of spiritual transfer a transfer of spiritual possibilities ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2 ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2 and the spirit entered me the bible says when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that i heard him that spake unto me the spirit entered me and lifted me i didn't have the ability to stand upon my feet but the spirit entered me and set me upon my feet we do not achieve the results of the kingdom god's dimension of results in the strength of the flesh the flesh is limited we are weak in the flesh it is true that the anointing can be transferred every dimension of grace that is available in the body is transferable the grace for speed is transferable the grace for wealth and abundance is transferable the grace for encounters is transferable the grace for wisdom is transferable can i tell you this you know the kind and the level of grace that is upon you by the possibilities that your life commands moments like this would require you opening up your heart to access other dimensions of grace and then superior levels of the grace that you may currently have two people can have the healing anointing but at different levels he measured a thousand cubits it was to my feet he measured a thousand cubits again ezekiel 37 tells us 47 now and it was to my knees he measured a thousand cubits it was to my loins then he measured a thousand cubits and the bible says it was an overflowing river there are different levels of the anointing you must contend for every dimension of grace that will be required for your life and your destiny being anointed in an area does not automatically replace the deficiency of the anointing in another area i can have the grace to heal it will not prosper me no there is the grace that makes for prosperity i may have the grace for wisdom but it will not bring me healing so the bible says god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having sufficiency in all things that you may abound unto every good work we are going to pray right now and then i'm going to be stretching my hands and doing an impartation from here i'm going to be praying for the sick and those who are oppressed and then speaking over the church speaking over the work and i want you to believe god for new levels you see you have to understand that god stores his anointings in men not in bottles of jar oil does not anoint until an anointed person anoints the oil oil does not anoint handkerchiefs don't anoint all of these things are simply systems of transfer he stores his grace in men so when god wants to bless you he will introduce you to the ministry of men when the devil wants to destroy you he will also introduce you to the ministry of men there is a requirement though if you want to receive impartation from men is found in two scriptures very quickly and then we'll pray matthew chapter 10 and verse 4 this is the key as far as receiving from men hebrews 11 hebrews 7 verse 7 i meant to say hebrews 7 verse 7 hebrews 7 verse 7 here's what it says and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better look at that scripture carefully and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better 
the less does not mean the weaker one the less means the one who is in need of that grace there has to be a spiritual potential difference you do not receive impartation from a colleague you do not receive impartation from a friend this respectfully speaking is where the pride of our generation has stopped many people from accessing superior levels of grace this is not human worship it is a law in the spirit jesus your jesus walked under a close heaven for 30 years until he met a prophet who opened his heavens not even jesus the logos of god opened his heavens by himself even if you are a midwife yourself at the point of delivery another midwife would have to help you to deliver effectively and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better the less is blessed of the better the less is blessed of the better matthew chapter 10 and verse 41 matthew chapter 10 and verse 41 very instructive scripture he that receiveth that means you can reject it he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward please keep that scripture there very instructive scripture you can receive a prophet in the name of your husband you can receive a prophet in the name of your brother you can receive a prophet in the name of your friend you can receive a prophet in the name of a relative you have to receive a prophet as touching his office to receive a prophet's reward when elisha was about to receive from elijah elijah said if you can see me as i'm taking up he was already looking at him if you can see me and i will show you shortly what it means to see every time the bible says look on us it's not just saying use your optical eyes uh -uh. please give us acts chapter 8 acts chapter 8 Or let's look at Acts chapter 4. I'm looking for the story. Let me turn my Bible here. Acts chapter 4. I want to find the story of, yes, Acts chapter 4. Peter and the leper okay Acts chapter 3 I beg your pardon Acts chapter 3 let's start from verse 1 but the key verse is verse 5 now watch carefully now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour verse 2 a certain man lame follow carefully lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask arms of them that entered into the temple verse 3 the bible says who seeing so he was not blind he was already looking at peter and john about to go into the temple he asked for arms if he did not see them he would not ask verse 4 and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said look on us now you must understand what that means the meaning of look on us
is found in verse 5 and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something from them that's what it means to see that's what it means to look to look does not mean just to use your optical eyes it means to use your spirit man in hunger and expectation to give heed expecting to receive so when i ask you to look on me you are already looking by way of your screen but now give heed expecting to receive something thank you lord jesus we're going to pray there are two prayer points that i would like to give us and then very quickly i'll begin to minister and just speak to us by the spirit and then we'll be done for this session prayer point number one search my heart oh god try my thoughts if there be any wicked way in me then lead me to the way everlasting that was a prayer of the psalmist i like you to lift your voice new covenant assembly cry before god and all who are following watching globally lift your voice and begin to pray search my heart oh god purify my heart let me return back to the place of genuine repentance genuine consecration the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord he that had pure hands and a clean heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive a blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation and then he says this is the generation of them that seek thy face O jacob are you praying psalm 66 verse 18 says if i cherished iniquity in my heart the lord would not hear me when i pray father we thank you lift your voice and pray new covenant assembly you are about to step into a new season pray let it be from the depth of your heart let it be from the depth of your heart cry your heart to the lord your maker let let it be a pouring out of your heart to the lover of your soul help me help me open me up in the name of jesus the bible says nevertheless the foundation of the lord standeth sure having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that named the name of christ depart from iniquity he says but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver they are vessels of wood and clay some vessels are unto dishonor the bible says others are unto dishonor it says if a man will purge himself that man will become a vessel unto honor meat for the master's use go ahead and pray go ahead and pray the bible declares romans chapter 12 and verse 1 i beseech you by the mercies of god brethren that you offer your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto you god he calls it your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says do not be conformed to the thinking of this world is the word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this age it says but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of god so you are crying father search my heart this is not condemnation it's a cry for the cleansing the cleansing of the word the cleansing of the word the Bible says, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. The prayer of brokenness is one that will always attract the attention of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe you are praying. Thank you, Jesus. Search my heart search my heart purify my motives why am i a walker in church why do i desire fame why do i desire financial resources all of these things are provisions in the kingdom but your motive your motive guess what the lord told me many years ago he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you it is never god's desire to keep us 
in poverty to keep us in sickness to keep us in lack he desires to flaunt us like trophies that bring glory to his name but our heart conditions must be checked vetted pruned this is what we are doing john chapter 15 when you read from verse 3 and 4 he says he that bears fruit john chapter 15 he says he that bears fruit my father will prune so that he will bear more fruit he that bears fruit my father will prune he will purge so that he will bear more fruits then verse 3 says you are clean only through the words that i have spoken there is a cleansing that happens through the word a cleansing that happens through the word now prayer point number two i like you to pray and cry unto god and say father the grace to exalt you above everything and above everyone the grace to exalt you you become my obsession i exalt you more than church i exalt you more than religion i exalt you more than the pursuit for things i exalt you more than miracles i exalt you more than bible study i exalt you more than prayer i exalt you more than anointing more than ministry exalt him if you worship heaven is still idolatry if you worship the throne is still idolatry we don't worship the throne is him that sits on the throne that we worship pray from the depth of your heart the grace to enthrone him to crown him king and to crown him lord next prayer point father grant me access to light grant me access to spiritual illumination take away ignorance from my life take away ignorance from my destiny please take the prayer serious new covenant assembly make sure you pray passionately from the depth of your heart take away ignorance in the name of jesus christ the bible says arise shine for your light is come it says the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light grant me access to light to know the mysteries that are responsible for the results that my destiny desires the kinds of results that will bring glory to the name of the lord in and through my life so that galatians 1 25 becomes true in my life and they glorified god in me and they glorified god in me galatians 1 and verse 24 and they glorified god in me and they glorified god in me father we thank you let that be our testimony in the name of jesus let that be our testimony in the name of jesus now number three i'd like you to pray for impartation fresh fire from heaven fresh unction fresh grace from heaven I receive in the name of Jesus lift your voice and pray pray new covenant assembly pray I release my faith with your pastor the angel over that commission and now we are praying cry for an impartation cry from the depth of your heart shake up a de balakatusia pray in the name that is above all names father fresh unction from heaven even in this season to command greater dimensions of results financially career-wise spiritually in ministry grace grace in the name of jesus christ acts chapter 10 and verse 38 the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him how god anointed look at the extent to which god anointed him the bible says go ahead and pray father i have tasted of your grace and your power but i contend for superior levels of the anointing you are a pastor in that church under the leadership of pastor Kola. i like you to pray pray from the depth of your heart father higher levels of the healing anointing 
higher levels of the anointing for signs and wonders higher levels of the anointing for prosperity higher levels of the spirit of prayer and supplication higher levels of influence higher levels of the grace for favor i'm tired of the current level in the name of jesus the bible says ye have encompassed this mountain long enough turn ye not words it's time to move and delve into greater and deeper levels of the waters thank you jesus thank you jesus now let me pray for the sick all of you who are trusting god for a miracle following online and then those trusting god for a miracle members of the new covenant assembly i'd like you to just lay your hands as a point of contact everywhere you are trusting god for healing if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest and i want you to believe believe there is power in the name of jesus christ i believe in the anointing of the holy spirit i believe in healing in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i stretch my hands right now and i declare in the name of jesus christ who is the son of the living god be healed now be healed now be healed every infirmity leave now in the name of jesus i minister healing i bring life every dead organ dead tissue comes back to life now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ dead organs come back to life now every tissue every system i declare that you come back to life now i minister life health vitality in the name of jesus be healed right now from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet blind eyes be healed deaf ears be healed bone conditions be healed in the name of jesus ulcers and all kinds of malignant growths be healed in the name of jesus every kind of discomfort i declare be healed now recurrent sicknesses be healed by the power of the holy spirit and now i minister deliverance to you by the power of the holy spirit every and any oppression of darkness any activity of witchcraft any activity of demonic forces plaguing god's people i declare be delivered now by the power of the holy spirit Be delivered right now in the name of jesus complete deliverance for you every force that has tied down your destiny your life so that you would not make progress i come by the rod of a higher priesthood and i declare you are delivered right now in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i release your destiny i decree and declare the bible says even the lawful captives shall be delivered i declare age-long captivities come under judgment right now i release you by the power that raised christ from the dead be healed be delivered be healed be delivered i command restoration everything you have lost time and things you've lost years you've lost things in the name of jesus i prophesy restoration supernatural restoration and i prophesy speed the bible says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of of ahab down to jezreel in jesus name i declare supernatural speed to your life and to your destiny all together let's pray for the new covenant assembly under the leadership of pastor Kola and his dear wife together as a family of faith i like us to pray and speak over the church a new opening in the name of jesus lord we thank you because this assembly steps into greater levels of exploits we declare numerical strength spiritual capacity exploits by the spirit jesus revealed jesus glorified sick bodies healed lives transformed destinies finding their place in the name of jesus christ are you praying for your church pray for the man of god pastor Kola and his wife pray for grace pray for utterance pray for multiplied levels of the anointing in the name of jesus that the word of the lord becomes strong upon his lips in the name of jesus christ decree and declare that these egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever are you praying 
are you praying make sure you pray from the depth of your heart thank you jesus now i want all of you who are following by way of this broadcast the entire family of the new covenant assembly i want you to stretch your hands towards the screen i want to pray and impart grace upon you impartation is powerful is the transference of spiritual possibilities you can carry a grace right now that you did not come to church with and begin to walk in superior dimensions of possibilities i stretch my hands and in the name of jesus standing in faith with your pastor i decree and declare over you every door that has been closed over your life and your destiny i speak to that door right now in Jesus name I declare that door is open hither and tither in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible declares that the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity every programming of darkness over your life over your liberty over your joy I overturn and I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare a fresh hunger for spiritual things by the power of the Holy Spirit I declare that you are initiated by baptism into this realm of hunger and passion for the things of God the encumbrances of the flesh that eats away your passion your fire your zeal I declare that they are cut out from your life in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has been a cause a cause for concern hitherto i release my faith with you and i declare that every request and every issue of concern let it be turned to your testimony in the name of jesus christ new covenant assembly hear the word of the lord i measure a thousand cubits for you in the spirit and i shift you to higher and more superior realms of impact in the name of jesus that when the lord would grant grace for us to meet in person it would be that great things have happened in that assembly in the name of jesus christ may you be a light to calgary may you be a light to canada in the name of jesus christ the bible says arise shine for your light is come i declare that you arise in the name of jesus your influence is multiplied by the spirit i declare that jesus is continually revealed through this assembly jesus continually revealed through the membership the pastorate in the name of jesus i forbid death from finding expression over that assembly in the name of jesus i speak life anyone appointed unto death hear the word of the lord i shut the mouth of the grave over you in the name of jesus all oh, death where is your sting and all oh, grave where is your victory not even covid would take the life of any of your members and i decree and declare that in the name of jesus christ the spiritual climate of canada hear the word of the lord i declare that controlling powers that reside in the heavenly places manipulating the sons of people to rebel against the counsel and the program of heaven i declare those powers come under judgment and i declare that angels are released that excel in strength in the name of jesus they see to it that the purposes of the kingdom are advanced without restraint in the name of jesus christ everyone trusting god for one miracle or the other i release my faith with you and in the name of jesus i declare 
that your desires become your testimonies for the bible declares in mark 11 verse 24 it says what things soever ye desire when ye pray it says believe that thou receivest it and thou shall have it therefore i prophesy to you rise to a new level rise to a new level rise to a new level rise to superior levels of favor according to esther chapter 2 and verse 15 and esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her i declare that from today everyone who looks upon you will favor you in the name of jesus christ exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 the bible says and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty in the name of jesus be blessed you are blessed in your going out you are blessed in your coming in i pray for fresh fire every kind of carelessness in your work with god i come against it lukewarmness you come on that judgment fresh fire grace to pray grace to fast grace to study the word a determination to be people of character solid character reflecting christ in his entirety i release that grace upon you you stand out as light even in a bedeviled world in the name of jesus christ and i decree and declare that anyone in fraternity with darkness to frustrate the grace of god upon your life i declare by the power of the holy spirit that the judgment of god comes upon them in jesus name i release you to experience the beauty of the life that christ brings to us the lord bless you the lord honor you the lord increase you and for the remaining days and weeks that are left even in your period of fast i pray for strength for you biologically your strength is renewed your health is restored and then your spiritual life steps into a new dimension it will never be that after this fast you return back to your old self i declare you are transformed by the spirit into a new and superior version of yourself the lord bless you the lord keep you in the name of jesus christ the lord bless you and the lord keep you in the name of jesus christ the lord bless you the lord keep you in the name of jesus finally before we wrap up for this session I want to sincerely appreciate pastor caller thank you for the love thank you for the opportunity to bring god's word to god's people um i know that the word was supposed to have come earlier but i thank god for the opportunity to have contributed to our fast and our growth i assure you that i'll be standing by and with you in prayer releasing my faith to see that the remaining days and weeks that you have are most profitable times in the spirit but let me encourage you to spend time praying spend time worshiping spend time listening to the teachings that build you and then invite as many to come to church and to be part of this invite your family invite your friends to be part of this great spiritual adventure and i believe that in the name of jesus it will profit us and then do remember to pray for your pastor you owe him um your prayer and your honor participate in the entire ministry activity and trust god for grace and in the name of jesus the lord bless you i also pray for all those in the studio here even as together as a team we're just airing this i pray that the lord will bless you let it be for you from glory to glory as god is visiting the family in calgary the lord is also giving us visitations of favor of revival of outpourings in the name of jesus christ the lord bless you the lord honor you go from glory to glory in jesus name you can always access my teachings online and find them for your spiritual edification to add to your growth in addition to that which god is using your pastor to teach you you can have this teaching sit down and make sure you are disciplined you maximize programs like this by adding discipline to your zeal so the lord bless you the lord honor you in jesus name i pray